we want to use the decreasing time algorithm to create a priority list for the die graph below, then schedule the project with two processors. So to create the priority list using the decreasing time algorithm, we want to list the task from the longest completion time to the shortest completion time. And the completion times are in parentheses, and we'll assume they're hours. Notice how the longest completion time is 12 hours, and there are two tasks that take 12 hours, task one and task eight. When we have two tasks that take the same amount of time, we list the smaller task number first. So task one has the highest priority, followed by task eight. And we'll list the completion times above these tasks to check our work. The next longest completion time is 11 hours. Task six takes 11 hours, so it's next in our priority list. The next longest task is task nine, which takes 10 hours. So task nine is next. The next longest completion time is eight hours for task three. So task three is next. The next longest completion time is seven hours. Notice task two and task four take seven hours. We list the lower task number first. So we'll first list task two, followed by task four. Again, both of these take seven hours. Now we're down to two tasks. The next longest completion time would be four hours for task seven, followed by two hours for task five. So task seven is next in the priority list, followed by task five. Again, task seven takes four hours, and task five takes two hours. So this is our priority list based upon the decreasing time algorithm. And now we'll schedule the project using two processors. Let's do this on the next slide where we have the priority list a little bit neater and easier to follow. When scheduling our project, we'll use these symbols here for a ready task, an in progress task, and a completed task. So for our first step, we want to circle all of the ready tasks, which would be task one, task two, task three, and also task four. None of these tasks have any prerequisite tasks. And now we circle these on the priority list. So we circle task one, task two, task three, and task four. And now we assign the highest priority ready task to processor one, which would be task one. Notice task one takes 12 hours. So here's 12 hours and task one is assigned to processor one, so now task one is in progress. The next highest priority ready task is task three, so we assign task three to processor two, which takes eight hours, so here's eight hours. Task three is now in progress. Moving forward in time, at eight hours, task three becomes complete, so we mark task three as complete. The next highest priority ready task is task two. So we assign task two, which takes seven hours, to processor two. Eight hours plus seven hours brings us out to 15 hours here. Task two is now in progress. After 12 hours, task one becomes complete. So we mark task one as complete. Notice once task one is complete, we have a new ready task, which is task five. So we mark task five as ready. The highest priority ready task is task four. So we assign task four to processor one. Task four takes seven hours. So 12 plus seven is equal to 19. Task four is now in progress. So we mark task four in progress. After 15 hours, task two becomes complete. So we mark task two as complete. Notice when task two is complete, we have a new ready task, which is task six. So we circle task six. Task six is the highest priority ready task, which takes 11 hours. So we assign task six to processor two. We're here at 15 hours. 
15 hours plus 11 hours is equal to 26 hours, which would be here. And now task six is in progress. So we mark task six as in progress. Moving forward in time at 19 hours, task four becomes complete. When task four becomes complete, notice how we have one new ready task. Task seven is now ready. Notice that task eight is not ready because task five is also a prerequisite task. Task seven is the highest priority ready task, so we assign task seven to processor one. Task seven takes four hours, so 19 plus four is equal to 23 here. Task seven is now in progress. At 23 hours, task seven becomes complete, so we mark task seven as complete. There are no new ready tasks. The highest priority ready task is task five, so we assign task five to processor one. Task five takes two hours. So we're at 23 plus two, that's 25 here. Again, this is task five, which is now in progress. At 25 hours, task five becomes complete. So we mark task five as complete. Once task five is complete, notice how we do have a new ready task. Task eight is now ready. So we circle task eight. The highest priority ready task is task eight, which takes 12 hours, which we assign to processor one. So 25 plus 12 is equal to 37. So now we're out here at 37 hours and task eight is now in progress. At 26 hours, task six becomes complete, so we mark task six as complete here and here. We have a new ready task, which is task nine. Task nine is the highest priority ready task. It's actually the only remaining task. Task nine takes 10 hours. Task nine is assigned to processor two. So we're at 26 plus 10, that would be equal to 36. So task nine is now in progress. Notice task nine becomes complete at 36 hours. And at 37 hours, task eight becomes complete and the project is complete. So notice how the completion time of the project is 37 hours and processor two has one hour of idle time here. Now let's answer our questions. The first question is task six is done by what processor starting at what time? So here's task six. So it's done by processor two starting at time 15 hours or 15. The next question, task seven is done by which processor starting at what time? Task seven is here, so it's completed by processor one, and it starts at time 19 hours. And then finally, the finishing time for this project, which we can see here, is 37 hours. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.